What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today we are going to be doing the best of the best of 2023 so far. I love doing these kinds of videos. It's a wonderful checkpoint for people who might be new to the channel or who have just been awash in the blur of everything that we have been reviewing so far this year. If you missed the last video, that was the fails of the year so far. A very fun video. I hope it's fun to watch because it's a lot of fun to film. And now we're going to be talking about the ones that I love. And they're products that might have come out this year or products I tried for the first time this year. So that will be all together. But before we jump in, I want to talk to you all about today's sponsor. Yes, today we are chatting about my good buddies over at Ana Luisa. They are a brand that's near and dear to my heart because they really hit all the marks for me. Ana Luisa is a beautiful, tasteful, gorgeous, creative jewelry company. When I first started working with Ana Luisa, I want to say that they were working only in gold plated jewelry, which is my favorite thing anyway. They do all of their gold plating in-house and they only use recycled gold, no like virgin mined gold. It lowers the overhead for producing the jewelry and they pass that savings along to you. All their pieces start at $39 and I have an exclusive discount. You can use my code in the link below to get 20% off site wide, but they are also now doing more silver, solid gold and diamonds. I love to see Ana Luisa's offering grow because every time I open their website, I get excited about what they have on offer. All of my favorite jewelry is from Ana Luisa. And when I saw this ring come up, y'all, I was like, when can I get it? Because it's in three colors and that was the hardest decision I made. I picked Malachite. Look at this thing. Look at it. I'm so obsessed with this ring. <laughs> Like I've been taking it off since I got it and I got the magic necklace too, but I love Malachite. Y'all know I'm just like, if I'm going to choose a color to have in my jewelry, it's going to be green. It's just a color that doesn't exist much in my wardrobe, but I feel like a, it goes really beautifully against like gold hardware, but also it just complements everything that I wear because it's not really that present in the rest of my wardrobe. And so I got the Malachite ring and it's got this gorgeous like resin on it. Isn't it just everything? I put this up on my Instagram story and my guy friend was like, what's the appropriate finger to wear this on? I need to know what size to buy it in. So it's unisex also. So I also got the beautiful Malachite necklace that goes with it. And it's on one of those chains that kind of has the little baubles as it goes, but the two together, so gorgeous. So yeah, I love that this is like this really beautiful kind of statement, but it's not in my way. It's really streamlined. I, I'm obsessed with it. I'm honestly obsessed with it. And they also have it in a blue and a white. It's everything. And then look at these earrings. Look at them. So my kid actually like grabbed these <laughs> off of my dresser. He loves to like pick out my clothes and pick out my jewelry and stuff. And he brought these to me and he goes, it's broken because they look like chain links that you've taken out of like a chain necklace, right? And I wear them underneath my plugs. And so if you're used to wearing like a chunky chain necklace or something, then, you know, this just looks like you kind of pulled one of the chain links out and turned it into an earring. And I love that Ana Luisa and a lot of their designs, they really managed to make something that is like cool and modern, but also just like not over designed. And that's how I like my jewelry is to like feel excited to put it on, but not like it's got an expiration date. Like there's a place for that in my wardrobe, but Ana Luisa really nails like timelessness with a twist. And you know, all their stuff lasts such a long time too. So yeah, that's added to the stack. All of this is Ana Luisa too. I've been wearing these for years. I've got my little fire opal. I have, I think that's a fire opal. It might just be a regular opal. I have this, you know, now sadly discontinued ear cuff. And then I have my safety pins that I always wear from them. And that is another thing. If you see something that you love, go ahead and snatch it up because sometimes they keep things forever and sometimes they, you know, go away forever. So anyway, I wanted to share that with y'all today. And I want to thank Ana Luisa for continuing to partner with me on my channel because I love them so very, very much, as you can see by the fact that I literally just wear them all day, every day. So check out the link down below and use my code for 20% off site-wide. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into my best of the best of the year so far. As usual, we're going to start with non makeup y things because otherwise I'll forget. Let's start with some skincare. <laughs> this is actually empty. I need to put it in my empties bin to talk about it in an empties video, but I have another one that I'm working on currently as well. It's empty because there's like eight of these in here. Yeah, there's eight patches in here. They're just, it's ridiculous how, like, how, how much I'm willing to pay for these, <laughs> but I don't care because they work. So these are the Hero Cosmetics Mighty Patches Micro Point for Blemishes. They make a lot of different kinds of these. But 
these are the ones that I like the most. So I was actually in Amsterdam with my friend Hallie and she was using them and I was like, hook a girl up. And so afterwards, when I got back, she sent me this whole gift box of all of the cool stuff that she had had that I had mentioned being interested in because she's a Virgo and she's just awesome and keeps track of that kind of stuff. She even sent me chocolates that had tulips on them because we had gone to Amsterdam for the tulip bloom. I digress, but in a lovely way. Either way, this was in there and I have since bought another pack of them myself and Hero Cosmetics reached out and actually like sent me a bunch of stuff. So like, oh, I am hooked up at this point. It's fantastic. But yeah, these have the little micro points in them. And so when you pull one of these off of its little sheet and you put it on a gigantic thing that's trying to erupt on your face, which has been happening to me quite a lot lately. There's this really satisfying feeling of taking these, like, got these little spikes in it, these teeny tiny little spikes, and you just, you're supposed to push it for 20 seconds because it's like, that's the medicine, I think, that's like dissolving essentially into the thing on your face. And my goodness, that in combination with my light stim for acne obliterates things. I just have to stay not anxious long enough to not pick them because if I just stick to what I know works. These do work really, really well. So yeah, that's why I keep buying them and they're fantastic. They have them for dark spots. They have more chill ones for like just regular acne and stuff too. And they have, I mean, they have a whole line of stuff. They've got retinols. They've got either way. I'm very impressed with Hero Cosmetics. I'm very impressed with those. I have one hair product. This is, is this not the most beautiful bottle? Like that's what, get, that's what originally I was just so excited when I pulled this out of the box. I was like, well, I'm gonna use this because I wanna look at it. You know what I mean? Like it's much easier to interact with something on a regular basis when you like seeing it all the time. Is that stupid? That might be stupid, but it also might be like the basis of like why I like anything is because I need like tiny dopamine hits. But regardless, this is the Crown Affair Leave-In Conditioner. This was a recommendation from my friend Natalie of my Skintrist because I was having, you know, breakouts and whatnot in my hairline from like residue from a conditioner. And she was like, mate, have you tried just using a leave-in? Because then, you know, you can put on a robe or something and then like the hair that doesn't have conditioner on it never actually touches your skin. And I was like, you might be honest with it, Natalie. And so I reached out to Crown Affair because they are on Shop My Shelf. And I was like, hey, I've heard really good things about your leave-in. Do you think I could try? And they were like, yeah, absolutely. And they are just the best. So yeah, I love this. And it smells fantastic. Oh my goodness. It smells like the salon, but then every once in a while, once your hair's dry, you'll catch this really nice smell that's kind of like man. <laughs> Just like sexy man. And you're just like, wait, what? And then it's gone. It's very ephemeral. But that's what I, I don't know. That's the experience that I get from this. And I have been using the crap out of this. Like I should, I shouldn't say use the crap. I use it every day, but I use like a pump, but I probably had it for a month. And look how little I've used. It's fantastic. I really want to try more stuff, from, more moist stuff. I want to try more stuff from Crown Affair because I just enjoy this so much and I'm very impressed. And they also sent me one of the towels. I like the towels too. It is no secret that I love this and this is a pretty recent discovery for me. So yeah, this is the Bloom Effect Tulip Dew Vitamins and Mineral SPF 50. This is a fantastic SPF 50, okay? Like it's just skincare all day long. I went to Amsterdam, like I said, back in April and I got to visit the tulip fields during tulip bloom season and I got to see how all of the stuff is made essentially. And the reason that Bloom Effects has harnessed the power of the tulip is actually because it has these like regenerative qualities to it. If you've ever noticed, like if you cut tulips and then you place them in a vase, you will notice that they like droop after a couple of days. And it's not because they're dying, it's because they're growing. And so they're actually longer than when you first put them in there. And so they just, you know what I mean? The proportions are off. And they're growing after you cut them. They have regenerative qualities in there. So what did Kim do, the owner of Bloom Effects? She goes, well, let's get a grant, like a, a research grant and find out what the, in the ingredients, right, are in the tulip, what the, you know, the active proteins or things, or I'm out of my pay grade at this point, but like, what about the tulip does that? And they actually managed to isolate those ingredients and that's what they use in their skincare and it's four times stronger regenerative qualities in like, than, than roses or something. Like, you know, and everybody uses roses and everything. Tulips are four times more powerful. So that is what's in this. And then, I mean, and in all their stuff. And then, and then it's just so gorgeous. Oh, it's so 
beautiful. It really is kind of like a cosmetic in and of itself, especially if you are oh so dry skinned like me. It's just so gorgeous. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It just leaves this really beautiful dewy finish on the skin. I love it so much. I love it so much. And I also have 20% off on the Bloom Effects website. That's just khaki. You just put in khaki at checkout. But yeah. Yeah, it's just really, really good and it's really hydrating. And I think that the best part is every time one of y'all gives me feedback about the Bloom FX products when you've tried them, you're like, that's a godsend. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever tried. And I'm just like, that's good. I'm really glad. Like y'all's opinion matters to me in aggregate, often more than my own does, you know? And then I have a couple of chemical sunscreens. I really, really like this. I think that this is great. This is the new Naturium UV Reflect Antioxidant SPF 50. We are in the time of year where I am just like fighting the pigmentation tooth and nail as hard as I can. I am so Italian and I'm not even that Italian. I'm like 25% Italian, but like I'm so Italian in the sense that like all I have to do is think about the sun and do I get a tan? No, ma'am. No, ma'am, I do not. <laughs> no, I get melasma, okay? I get pigmentation. All my freckles just kind of connect to each other in this just really like, ugh, like just disheartening way because I do spend so much money and time and energy and just give so much thought to trying to maintain like brightness to my skin. And so just prevention, prevention, prevention. This is the chemical sunscreen for people who hate chemical sunscreens. It's like no weird chemical smell. It has not like irritated my skin or anything. And there's nothing like fussy about the formula. They're not trying to kind of like make it too blurring or you know, one thing or another. It's just a really, really beautiful chemical sunscreen that is like lightweight and hydrating. I love it. It's just wonderful. And I don't think, I mean, nothing from Naturium is particularly expensive, so. And then the other one is the Hyaluronic Watery Sun Gel from Isntree, which is, a, you know, it's an Asian sunscreen. And so they have just different technology for what they put in their sunscreens than we do. And it's very effective. This is Ingrid's favorite. We went to a skincare store in Chinatown, like an Asian skincare store so that she could, you know, stock up on these. And I was like, I love that stuff. And I have been sent like three bottles of it or something from Stylevana. It's really, really awesome. And it is chemical and it is so just like non-complaining on the skin and it's super hydrating. It's got eight types of hyaluronic acid in it. So that's really, really nice for me. I just love Asian skincare because I feel like we all have the same goal in mind. <laughs> like make my skin look really bright and clear and dewy. Like give me that. Make me look like a baby. <laughs> I have a toddler. I want my skin to look like that. <laughs> All right. And that rounds out the skincare and et cetera category. And we are going to now jump into the makeup. It will shock absolutely no one that we're going to talk about this right now. This is the Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. It's like I've swatched two dewy things. You know, you could just basically extrapolate from there what this is going to look like. But I do like that it's a vitamin C because vitamin C is going to help. Yeah, it's going to strengthen your SPF and... It's just pretty. And I also, I say this every time, but I'm always looking for things that are hydrating and dewy and like good for the appearance of my skin, making it look more hydrated and like, you know, youthful or whatever. But I don't want everything to be like everything to be like soupy on my skin because then it's gonna like mess with the finish of my foundation as it goes on and stuff. And so it's kind of always striking that unique balance. I would rather have my sunscreen be dewy and then my primer not or whatever. Anyway, yes, yeah, so this adds a dewy thing Finish, but it's a tenacious dewy finish. Like it's not just because it's staying wet. It's like drying down, but keeping a really beautiful finish to the skin. And that finish still translates to any foundation that you put on top of it, kind of maintaining a little bit of that radiance. And it doesn't have any glitter in it. It's just a really nice finish. So I like this very, very much. I use it a lot. And if you're like khaki, like what about like your Victoria Beckham primer? Like these are, this is only stuff that I tried for the first time this year. So yes, I did just do a top shelf video. So that's a really good one for things that have no temporal context. It's just like what I like right now, period. So. This falls into both categories. That was the wrong side of it. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin. This is the 
only foundation that we're gonna talk about today because I've been using so many more foundations that I've had for a while lately. I have been using like the Luminous Silk, I've been using the Chanel, number one day Chanel Revitalizing, the Camellia one. That one is the one I'm wearing today. I, I love them both so much. They're very, very similar, <laughs> but this is the skin tint of skin tints for me. It's just finally, I get to be a part of the Danessa Myricks complexion club because she's just got such a unique viewpoint on texture. She's just very, very good at texture in my opinion. And I always loved the kind of dewy dry down of her original complexion products. The vision cover that is in this like hyper concentrated formula and then you would like, you know, mix it in with other things or you could get a, you know, wildly, wildly high coverage finish. Or her original Yummy Skin, which I just had reservations about mainly because A, I had trouble getting the right shade initially, which is like not her fault, but I didn't want to buy another one to try to like get my right shade because it was so strongly fragranced. I didn't like the fragrance. I don't mind a fragrance, but I didn't like that fragrance. And so this doesn't have a fragrance to it. You know, she kind of hurt everybody. And I mean, look at that. Look at just that nice blur on the skin. It's just, you know, on my arbitrary scale of coverage, I would give it like a four, you know? It's just a really wearable, easy thing that looks like my skin on its best day. <laughs> and uh, I got it in shade two. Oh. This. This is the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer. Wearing it today. I just love it. I just love this stuff. I just think that it's one of those makeup items that is going to go down in history as just being a, a landmark product where everybody just talks about it because it's good. It doesn't matter, you know, how long it's been out or whatever. Like, I just want to keep telling people about it because it's just so hydrating and pretty. And it's fairly pound for pound, like well priced, especially for being, you know, under the Givenchy heading. Kind to maturing skin, kind to my under eyes. You know, I give it like a, an eight out of 10 on coverage because, you know, it's not like wild, but it's pretty darn good. It's pretty darn buildable. I really like the coverage level on it. I wear N95 and y'all have heard about this ad nauseum. Just know that I love it. Another concealer that I'm just really, really into that I just, I didn't try the original Stay Woke for the first time this year, but I tried the new reformulation for the first time this year. I didn't even know they reformulated it. This is from Uma. They did, they reformulated and you can still buy the OG one. This is the new one though. And it is in shade White Pearl T1. It's so much creamier. It's less kind of glowy bright as far as like the pearlescence, I think. I think that the older one had some pearlescence to it. This is just a straightforward, really gorgeous, I would give it a nine out of 10 on coverage, creamy concealer, and it is just so lovely. It's so kind to my skin. I love the way that this looks. It really reminds me of somewhere in between like a Tarte Shape Tape, but like the creamy one, and maybe like the Pat McGrath concealer. It just has that nice glycerin any finish on the skin so it's not going to like dry down to something sort of silicone blurry but it still maintains so much creamy coverage look look at that shade match I cannot shut up about that shade match like I said white pearl t1 like the shade match is wild if you are my skin twin is that not the most insane shade match you've ever seen <laughs> like what? Yeah, so it's like you do like a double take on it, not to be confused with their double take contour stick, which I also love. I think that this is on sale on Ulta right now. I mean, if you're watching this in real time, I just can't recommend it enough. It's so good. Okay, a powder bronzer. Let's go ahead and chat about it here. This is the LH Cosmetics Infinity Bronzer in the shade Always, and I did get a couple of other shades in this, and I was just actually, my camera cut me off, but I was putting a little bit on because my skin ended up a little bit pink today. That was what I was, that was what I was saying to no one, to absolutely no one, is that I went a little too hard with this today because I'm just so excited about it. This is the Chanel Rosy Light Drops. I haven't had this long enough to tell y'all whether it's like a favorite favorite, favorite forever, but I'm obsessed with it right now. I used it as a primer and I mixed it in with my foundation. And so I ended up, I mean, honestly, this is the closest my face has been to matching my body in a long time because I've been so amped on all of my bronzers lately. Like I have to admit like that actually matches, but it might be even a little bit pink because it's the rosy drops. Either way, we're bronzing a little bit with this because I love it so freaking much. This is the best shade that I have had in a bronzer in such a long time. It's so good. It's like that perfect 
neutral. It's got a touch of green in it, but it's like, a, it's just so beautifully neutral. And so yeah, it, it really brings like a very believable kind of bronze to my skin. Do I love this packaging? No, I do not. It's not my thing. That's how much I love this product is I keep it around and use it all the time, even though I'm not excited about the packaging. It's that good. And then the non-powder bronzer. I love this. I love it. And y'all know, I, and you might not know, I am not a hardcore love everything from Jones Road, like Stan. I have said in the past, and I still believe this, that Jones Road kind of bisects their brand. They have this one side of all of their products that's like this skincare with some pigment in it kind of philosophy that's not about performance as much as it is about like ease of use and maturing skin wanting something that is like hydration first and then like cosmetic second. And then there's the other side of the brand that is truly, I think, kind of the classic Bobbi Brown of it all, where it's like, this is performance makeup, like their mascara, their powder bronzers, even though they're not my favorite, they're still, you know, performance oriented. And even those pencils, those pencils are awesome. But this falls into the category of a performance cosmetic, and that is the gel bronzer. I have a shade light. Only comes in three shades. I feel like they can do better, especially because they made such good, like they made some cool shade choices. They didn't go deep enough, but they still like made interesting choices on the powder bronzers. Like why didn't y'all make a rosy bronzer in the gel? That would have been nifty, okay? This is a perfectly executed gel bronzer. It's just perfect. I love the finish of it. I love the consistency of the color. It doesn't have any like shimmer to it or anything like that, but it just makes my skin look so darn healthy. I love it so much. It's so pretty. And then I actually, since they sent me two shades and the lightest one was the one that matched me, I brought the medium one to Ingrid when I stayed with her last weekend and she loves it too. So yeah, it's just a really healthy looking bronzer because the gel finish on it is just so hydrated. It, I love it so much. How many times are you gonna say, I love it so much. I love it so much. I love it so much. Oh my God. I was wrong. This is not, it was not the only foundation in there. Yeah, I forgot about it. It's because I think of it as like just a general co complexion product, not necessarily a foundation, but this is the Bosma foundation. I have it in the shade 38. Look how much of it I've, I've used. Oh, look at how much of it I've used. Alone in a room talking to a camera. Love this so much. I talked about it a lot. This is the only product that they have on offer right now. And like, I just think it's cool that they're concentrating all their efforts on that. Huge shade range beautiful, like matching every undertone. It's just a really, really good universal kind of complexion product. I haven't talked about the finish on it very much because it's interesting that like, I think I said I was in like a car full of girls on my influencer trip that we went on, you know, that really great creator, creators and friends trip. And there was like people of multiple ages, multiple skin types, multiple skin tones, you know, whatever. And we were all talking about how much we love this stuff. So it's just not, super dewy and it's not super matte either. And it just gives you like the right amount of coverage, the right finish, it's adaptable. I don't know, it, it works for so many people. It's a very, very high performing product. Let's talk uh, about blushes. The first thing will surprise no one. I am just so pleased that for all of my expectations, this was actually really, really good when I got it. I was so <laughs> appetized by this release and my anticipation for it was so, like I could have crashed and burned on expectation versus reality on the luminous silk blushes from Armani, but I love them. I feel like they made the right choices in terms of the shades. I feel like they made the right choices in terms of like the formula and how much pigment is in the formula. And this coral shade 30 is just kind of everything. It is looking like it's trying to hard pan on me a little bit, but I use the living crap out of it. Sign me up for a coral blush always. Also like, does this pop out? That would be neat if it did. Be cool if you did. I have this in the beige one, 10, and then I also have it in the like sparkly pink one, 50, and this is 30, and I use all of them. I just think that they are great. They're the ones that I like think of when I wanna reach for a, a color, you know what I mean? If I've got that color in it, this is the first one that I'm gonna use. And previous to that, this was really the star of the show, and there's not really any good reason that I don't reach for these as much anymore other than the fact that I just kind of like the colors that I have of the Armani ones better. This is the House Labs Color Fuse Blush. I don't know actually what happened to Pomelo Peach. It's definitely in a perfectly normal place somewhere. 
But this is Hibiscus Haze, and this is just a really beautiful formula. I tend to buy like, you know, my, I don't know, they didn't really have a beige. I would love it if they had like a beige because I'm a beige and coral girly, but you can see even as I hold that up, like that's a pretty color. You know, that's just a nice color. What this has going for it is that gel to powder texture because it gives this really beautiful blurred finish on the skin and it isn't nearly as like loud on the skin as it looks like it's going to be in the pan. There's just something about these that looks un approachable because they just look like they're going to be really, really pigmented. But they're kind of like the Make Beauty powders in the sense that they have that like micro suede feel to them. And when you see it in the pan, it's just darker than it's going to come off on your skin. If you're discouraged or intimidated by these shades, like understand that they're not as extreme on your face as they look in the pan. Ooh, another favy fave. We're going to get into like the beiges and the pale pinks now. This was a quick favorite for me. I like the formula and I like the color. So this is the vanish. Why do they call it a vanish blush? You want to cover something when you're making it vanish. We're not blushing anything away, are we? Other than our sadness. Yeah, so this is Loyal, the shade Loyal, and it, she's just this beautiful desaturated kind of pinky beige. Look at it. It's like the literal color of my lips right now. These are the colors that I'm seeking out right now. It's this and like the perfect coral. I'm like in pursuit of the perfect coral, you know? And when I was at Sephora with Steph and Natalie in DC, which I'm going back to DC this weekend, I'm so excited. I found this and I love it. It was just love at first, love at first swatch. That color is just so me. And the formula is really nice. It does have a good amount of, I think, kind of creaminess to it. So it's not completely like matte when you blur it out, but it is blurring because hourglass just knows what to do on skin you know their stuff tends to be just like decisive in terms of what the finish is on your skin and it's just a very flattering finish and then we have this shocking absolutely no one it, and i mean everybody has been calling this the summer of blush or the year of blush and so that's why there are so many blushes in here but these are still like ones that i mean among all the other ones that have come out that i've tried or swatched or whatever like these are the winners so Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush One from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the shade that you can only get on her website, the actual Pillow Talk shade. And I just think the absolute world of it, okay? I think it's great. It's so easy to use. It's so, like, you, you wouldn't think that something with this little sponge tip would be, like, easy to use. Mine, it's something, something squoze out when it wasn't supposed to squoze out. That sponge tip doesn't seem like it should make sense at all, and it does. You can just go bip, 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 and blend it out with one of these. This is a, two, a 112 from BK. I have been loving these. I have the Peach Pop as well. I would recommend that one for either not the faint of heart or people who have, like, deeper skin tones who need something that's a little bit more pigment rich because it can it can happen real fast. Life comes at you fast with that one. This one's a lot more, a lot more subtle. And you can see it against Loyal, it's like more mauve. And if you are interested in seeing all of, at least at the, at the time, it was all of my like beige blushes swatched next to each other, I do have a face swatching video, one of my very unhinged thumbnails of me, you know, actually having swatched them all over my face. There is one of those. It's very, very recent. And I can link it somewhere if I remember, or you just go find it on my channel. Okay, that's it on blushes. Let's talk about some eye products here because there are so few, so few. And do you know why? Do you know why that is? That is because my routine has gotten so simplified by the products that I have been introduced to this year, okay? The first one is the Ciroc Quad, okay? And you can organize these quads however you want. These are the shades Chocolat Noir, Haute Chocolate, is it called Ombre? And Chami. They picked these out for me. I did buy some myself and then they sent these to me and I like these better. The formula, if you are a luxury eyeshadow formula type person, this is the most luxury, luxury eyeshadow formula I have ever used. It is so good. Somehow it does the right amount of blending and also the right amount of gripping. It's just really, really nice. And it's also the reason that I eschew so many other luxury quads or quints from other brands is just because if I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna recommend it, I'm gonna tell you about Surat. I feel like I'm minor bird. I just keep saying the same things about these. So the Make Beauty Eye Stilos, someone informed me in the comments that I was saying it wrong, Eye Stilos, did not make it in because even though I like them, I cannot in good conscience recommend them in like a best of the best because they break so easily. Like I lose some of these small amount of product 
when I try them for the first time because the little dome snaps off of them, that's a flaw, okay? That's a flaw. And like, I don't want to do that to anybody else. These are really just the ones. These are the Victoria Beckham eyewear and mainly in the shades Pecan and Trench. They're just so good. And mine are so loved. Look how loved they are. I use these almost every day. The ones I'm wearing today aren't these. I decided to try the ones that were sent to me from Laura Mercier. They have released some new shades and they sent me some of the old shades or whatever. I'm not sure, but I used mostly brick from them today, which is why I have this kind of like warm tone thing going on on my eyes. And you know, I'll report back, but I can definitely attest to the fact that like these, they've changed my entire eyeshadow routine because they make the first part of the routine so easy. It's like I put a shadow in the crease, I put a neutral on the lid and kind of up here. And then I just take a brush and I just blend them together. And then like the boring part is out of the way so fast. And it wasn't even boring because it was so fast. It was like exciting because it was so easy. Like that's how I feel about these. And I just think, I just think that they are a revelation. I think that they're great. I love them in their boring boringness. Like they're so beautiful and so boring and so lovely. And I will swatch them for you. There's trench and pecan. Just so nice. Just so nice. Okay, I just think that Victoria Beckham gets it. She just gets it and she puts the effort in. I just think that these are great. Hey y'all, I forgot to include this literally only because it didn't fit in the little bag that I was holding. And so when I got to filming, it was just sitting on the floor. <laughs> I was like, darn it. So I was like talking about how I'm not using a lot of palettes and my you know routine has become so simplified by eyeshadow sticks. This being the one massive exception. So this is the Revolution Beauty maxi reloaded large it up palette i bought this for 18 dollars at ulta and it has come in so clutch like it is just all the colors that i want to wear on any given day especially when i just don't have the brain space to be giving to like a really like new idea for an eye look right these are just the colors that feel really intuitive and there are so many of them that i feel like i can kind of go into a flow state and the formula is fantastic. Like that's what I really like about these is, I mean, they're still drugstore in the sense that you're not getting anything like, you know, wildly duochrome or multi-chrome or even like, you know, a, a really cool scattered light glitter or anything. But the mattes are lovely. The satins are lovely. This is just a really great everyday palette that does have a little bit of excitement to it. And if for the, I mean, not even just for the price, the price is astounding. This accomplishes so much. And the way that I've talked about a lot of luxury palettes kind of disappointing me, an $18 palette at Ulta just knocked my socks off. So I forgot to include this when I was recording earlier. All right, our last eye product is this. This is the Coolfi Beauty Zari Eyes Eyeshadow. And I specifically love the shade Bronze Brocade. So if this this kind of like jelly texture. I'm like touching it and not putting it on camera, ding dong. So yeah, it's, oh, it's so pretty. Look at it, it's so pretty. It's like that perfect bedroom eyes color. And I would compare it in color to the like hourglass scattered light in Ray, which mine did finally, it's, we're gonna call her shattered light. And it's not because I was super irresponsible with it. It's because I have long nails and I accidentally stabbed it. Oops. So this is, the Scattered Light in Ray. They're really, really similar in color, but the Zari Eyes is more consistent in texture. Still really beautiful and glitzy and awesome, but it doesn't have the actual like scattered light effect to it. And it doesn't have quite as much kind of silver-ish, you know, spangly stuff, but very, very similar and long wearing. It's a very, very good long wearing formula. I'm looking for a towel just for my finger. I'll leave the swatches there. I don't care. So those are the eye products that have really impressed me this year so far. And now we're going to talk about a lot of lip products. Oh my God, there are so many. Oh my God, there are so many. <laughs> All right, let's start with this from About Face. You know what? I think that these are fantastic. I was just kind of scrolling back through my own Instagram like you do. And I saw that this was like one of the first like full line lip swatch videos that I made. So anyway, this is the Cherry Pick Lip Color Butter. And they do smell strongly of fruit. It doesn't really bother me. I don't really care. And the colors are just off the charts gorgeous. This is so beautifully like shiny. It comes in a bunch of really gorgeous shades. And if you want to see them all swatched, you can see that on my Instagram. I highly recommend them. And I think that they're like $18, you know, 
about face is fairly affordable. Next, let's talk about something that's not affordable at all. It's not affordable at all, friends, no. But you can't, they are replaceable, so you don't have to rebuy the component every time, but they're still expensive. But I bought these myself. These are the La Perla, these are two different formulas in their lipsticks. So we have the Matte Silk Lipstick in Cinnamon Red and the Satin Lip Balm in Espresso Lips. I was kind of initially disappointed because I bought them thinking that they were going to be super grungy. I thought that like, based on the colors I saw online, I like sent pictures of them to Hannah. I was like, they're gonna be so, they're gone grayish. They're not, they're gorgeous though. Uh, like at least on me, like I don't think that someone who would want gone grayish would find these appealing because they're not at all what I expected. I just happened to get lucky in the fact that they both look incredible on me because I love a kind of like coral peach muted lip. And I think that Cinnamon Red is actually the better shade for me. I do like Espresso Lips and it's the balm, so I would, you know, happen to probably like the formula better because I like something sheer, but it's just more beige. It's just two different moods, right? But this is the one, hello, mirror. This is the one that I find the most exciting because y'all know me. Is there a pigmented lip that I would rather wear than just wearing something clear? Like hardly ever, hardly ever ever am I going to put on a bold lip of any kind that's like a pure color that covers my whole lips like it's opaque and not go ah and wipe it off like for years I would do that I would just like wipe it back off I'm like no I don't want to wear that this is the game changer this is the one that like put lipstick on the map for me and I'm just so glad that it's such a full experience too because as much as I like a Gucci lipstick for example because they really do nuance shapes they just know what they're doing I don't want that smell on my mouth it just like cramps my style all day to be able to like taste that like rosy, is it violet? Kind of like smell and taste, it's too much. This smells pleasantly of vanilla, okay? And that might just be a preference thing, it probably is, but I would much rather my lipstick of any price point smell like vanilla than flowers. And look at, look at the little outside of it. It's got like a nice little design on it. Not that that really matters, but I mean, they've really taken pains to have some luxury vibes. Love to see it. This is just my favorite lipstick. This is another one that shocked me in the sense that it's, a lipstick and I love it and that is the Armani Lip Power in 102. I saw that shade and I swatched that shade and I said that is my shade and I just love her you know as these beiges and corals go that's the one and I'm always trying to kind of nail down the right amount of neutrality because any color can be a neutral version of a color or a, a cool version of a color or a warm version of a color right and so yes there are many beiges in the world but I looked at it and I was like I need a neutral beige and when it goes on my skin I need it to to not go peach, even though I'm not opposed to peach. I didn't want it to be peach. I don't want it to go orange and I don't want it to go too pink. Everything tries to turn pink on my complexion. And when it didn't, I was like, sold, sold $45 lipstick, sold, like really? But yes, like it was just really good and the formula is great too. Ooh, 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 ooh. Before we get out of like the really pigmented lipsticks, this is another one that has just blown my mind in terms of wearability for me. And it's not necessarily the shade specifically, but this does come in a lot of really cool committed shades. And those are the Make Beauty Cream Supreme. That's what they're called. These very, very bold lipsticks. This happens to be in the shade Infrared. This left-handed nonsense. I'm gonna end up breaking a bullet, but oh my word. Oh my word. Yeah, it's a really, really good, super saturated coral red. They're just really, really saturated and easy to wear. I think that they're hydrating. I think that they're easy to use. And I actually really love like this beautiful, like weighted component. It's just really nice. And these <laughs> are refillable. Okay, we'll finally say what I'm wearing on my lips today. So this is the Lip Sleek in Nude de Soleil from Surat. She is very, very similar in shade to the Armani that I just swatched. It's a little bit more caramel. I, it's hard to even tell because of just like the lighting and the contours of my hand. But the Armani's a little tiny, a tiny bit rosier by comparison and Nude de Soleil is just a little bit beiger. Oh, I love the shade so much. It does after a while, like I said, start to give me a tiny bit of white ring of death. It's so, it's so small. You know, it's really not a big deal. And the color is just so unbelievably gorgeous and my hair's falling out. It's so beautiful. And I love the lip sleeks. I just love a good barely there lipstick. I just did like a short form on that where, you know, I was talking about my favorite barely there lipsticks and it was honestly hard to narrow it down. Speaking of, oh, no, this, I consider this a balm. I was like, I should have included this, but this is more of a balm. It's like, honestly, almost invisible. This is the LH Cosmetics Fantastic. I just made a really cute face. In Topaz and it is another one that's just so beige. <laughs> Look at it. Ah, it's that one right there. 
It's so beige, it's even got like gray in it, like lavender gray compared to the other ones. And it's, I built that up like crazy. It really doesn't have much pigment to it at all, but like look at it, look at it, look at it, look at that color, it's ridiculous. Also, can we talk about how my hair is finally growing back in? <laughs> I lost so much hair from stress and now it's growing back in. I'm so grateful. Either way, I'm pretty sure all of her stuff has like an SPF 15 in it, but it doesn't ever like have the SPF taste or smell to it. And it doesn't have any smell to it. That's what's so great about these. They're not flavored, they're not scented. I don't know why I'm compelled to put it on. I just wanna see it. But it really is a tinted lip balm. And look how gray it is. Like it almost mutes my lips down. It's so very nice. And it comes in a lot of really good, like nuanced shades. The next kind of barely there lip situation that I have here are these Hourglass, mm, they're not gonna tell me what they're called. They're either glossy bombs or balmy glosses. It's one or the other, but this is the shade Mist. Ooh, she's so pretty. She's really trying to be that girl. Yeah, these are another one of those like, you know, click up. It's almost too glossy to be in this delivery system. I love all of the shades of this. I think that they're gorgeous. Again, no fragrance. It's just a really, really lovely formula, especially for people who want to add a little bit of like glossy color to their look, but you don't want like a full on lipstick. It's just wonderful. I'm using this as an opportunity slash excuse to talk about the Victoria Beckham Posh Gloss, which is not new. I think that they came out in like 2019 or something, but I tried a new shade. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about Picante now because I just love this formula so much. It is my favorite lip gloss formula. I just wanna talk about it, even though it's not new. So, Bikini's my favorite. I also love the clear, and you really, I mean, I'm not gonna kick any of them out of bed, right? But Picante is like that perfect coral lip. It's like this milky coral that just looks so beachy and delightful on me. It makes me so happy. No fragrance. The formula is perfect. It doesn't do any white ring of death nonsense. The component is glass. It's so gorgeous. This is the perfect lip gloss to me. It just is. And then here, here are two more, two more. Okay, just two. I need to go dig these out of my purse. That's how you know, that was in my purse too. One of them is the Clarins Comfort Lip Oil, Lip Comfort Oil. You can see I've used quite a lot of this already. I use this constantly. I love it so much. It's just a really, like everything that everybody says about it is true. It is scented. It smells like a citrus snow cone. It's just very nostalgic to me. I love it so much. I just like, I just like how glossy it is. It just makes me feel kind of sexy. I love everything about interacting with the package. I love how big and hunky chunky it is. I love how easy it is to find in my bag because it's just a unique kind of shape. I don't know, there's something kind of modern but also classic about it, and it's just an enormous doe foot that is luxurious feeling when you're using it. And finally, I just had to text Ingrid yesterday and be like, did you get any mail? And she was like, what? I got a Sephora package? Yes, you did, my lovely lady, because yeah, I bought this for her because she loved it too. I was like, you gotta try this. Ingrid tried my new Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze from YSL. Y'all, this is such a crowning achievement for me because I am officially, I think in like a probationary period, but I'm like officially a, a new person on like the YSL gifting list. And this is what they sent me this month. And I was just like, well, if you're gonna send one thing, make it this good. You know what I mean? It's just so good. So I like the original Volupte shines and whatnot, but like I find them kind of hard to wear because it's almost like too much pigment trying to be suspended in such like a soupy formula and they don't really last very well. Like I love the colors and I love them when they first go on, but I feel like they just don't wear for very long. This wears so long. Like you can sleep in this. It's super nourishing. It's truly a lip gloss in a tube. It's still in that gorgeous, heavy, YSL luxurious packaging and it just happens to be like an incredibly effective and like healthy looking lip gloss. Love that for me, me and all my swatches. So yeah, y'all, those are the best of the best of the year so far of the things that I've tried for the first time, either new or I've tried them for the first time and there just is so much more to come. We are just starting to scratch the surface of I feel like release season because you know, the kind of like winter spring era, it's like, yes, we get some things, that's fine, but like everybody gets really excited in the summer and then woo, when fall hits and then we're going into holiday. So like, this is the lighter helping. This is the appetizer, the 
lose boosh for the rest of the year. So I hope that this was fun and helpful for y'all. I'll list all the products down below. And I will also list my Ana Luisa link for y'all to get 20% off. It'll have a code down there as well. And I highly recommend that you check them out because they're my absolute favorite. So thank you to Ana Luisa for partnering with me and thank y'all for hanging out with me today. If you did enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you would like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, Subscribe if you're cool. Cool people subscribe. I will put a playlist up here of my previous best and worst, best of the best and the worst videos for y'all to check out because regardless, they're a whole lot of fun. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.